What is up? What is good? The Wolf is here. And in, in this video, uh, something a little bit different. Usually I always do lots of talks on like trailer reactions and, you know, discussing breaking down the trailers and this and that stuff. Uh, in this one, I actually wanted to do a prediction, something a little bit, uh, a little bit different, like I said, of Resident Evil 8 and what my predictions are of what Resident Evil, Resident Evil 8 is going to be and what the story might revolve around, what we're going to see out of it. So, um, as, and, and this is just going to be a total, just hangout video. So I got the, uh, I got the wiki up of all the Resident Evil games and I was, I was looking through and I noticed, okay, so July 24th, 1998, uh, is when Resident Evil one, the mansion, all the mansion outbreak and everything else happens. Um, you know, Chris and Jill, Wesker and Barry, they all get trapped in, in inside the mansion and Wesker, it's kind of a setup and, you know, all that stuff happens where, where Wesker, you know, you start to learn that, you know, Wesker is kind of behind stuff. Um, he's just trying to get the T virus so he can use it for his own personal stuff. Um, and of course, along the way, you know, like, like Barry and, and Rebecca, you run, you're running with Barry and, and he's around the mansion stuff. He, he pops up every once in a while. Rebecca's there from, you know, Resident Evil, uh, zero. And, you know, she finds the mansion after all the events of Resident Evil zero happens and, and all that. Um, so they're all the stars team, of course. So it's the, the introduction to the stars, the T virus, the whole thing, the whole ordeal alongside um, all of that, them trying to blow up the mansion and all that stuff to make sure the T virus goes nowhere, it ends up being that the tyrant, um, you know, is he's just like out in the woods, you know, set loose in the forest. They try and blow up the mansion to blow up the tyrant, which of course we all know that tyrant, um, yeah, which is tyrant is Mr. X, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, just like the, the big guys like that, like Nemesis and everything, they can't be destroyed. They're indestructible. So, um, that's Resident Evil 1. Okay, so Resident Evil 2 is set uh, two months after the original Resident Evil. Resident Evil 3 coincides, is is in the same, same time period. It's just hours before Resident Evil 2. Now... I think what they're doing is they are kind of, because the stories are being flushed out in Resident Evil 2, if, because of the Resident Evil engine and everything, that the plot the plot points and everything are actually kind of starting to reimagine the whole storyline of the Resident Evil franchise. Meaning, it's almost, in a sense, kind of pushing towards, and this is where Resident Evil 8 story picks up, um it's kind of pushing towards like are resident evil five six and uh or four five and six are almost kind of being retconned in a sense and i know that there's a lot of people i love resident evil four i i get it um you know i i didn't mind it i think it is a little overrated but uh I think all the Resident Evils are just as good as one another. I do like them just as much, uh, all of them. But uh, I really feel like Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6 going on forward to Resident Evil 8 are kind of being just kind of just dropped off from off from the whole storyline. What, what my gut feeling is telling me is that Resident Evil, after Resident Evil 3, uh, the, the timeline kind of shifts up to Resident Evil 7, which is set years afterwards. Or Resident Evil 8 is going to be kind of like half of it is going to be like Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 4, like a reimagined Resident Evil 4 to where Resident Evil 8 t tells a story of like a Wesker um, kidnaps President's daughter, Leon and Ada. They go to try and, you know, get the President's daughter back. All of a sudden they run into Chris and uh and like jill and claire and everybody's there and they all start up like this whole like unit of not a military unit but just like this like uh i don't know like this thrown together kind of units of the stars that end up going on like missions together later on and that's what resident evil they're like the second half of resident evil 8 it turns into that so then you have ethan there because if you remember at the end of resident evil 7 uh so first, not a human, uh, Chris Redfield teams up with a newly formed Umbrella Corporation known as Blue Umbrella. Now, 
again, I mean, maybe it's not even stars. Maybe it's Blue Umbrella. I totally forgot about Blue Umbrella until I just, you know, it's this was like that, that DLC. After you, your mind's blown with Resident Evil 7, then you go through the DLC and you're like, okay, that was fun, whatever. Um, but there's major plot lines that are being planted here to set up Resident Evil 8 to be totally different than, than what Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6 set up. Uh, which a lot of people, they, they say that Resident Evil 6 is like the worst storytelling aspect. So Resident Evil 2 Remake, that's why I'm really on the, on the thing of Resident Evil 2, 3, and 7 are reimagining the whole damn storyline. So they're pretty much redoing the storyline. It's like an alternate universe or something, whatever you want, however you want to call it. And that is what is going to be. Resident Evil 8 is going to be that reimagined universe, which I th- I think if they did that, it would be great because Resident Evil's 2 and 3 story, the way they're being flushed out, the way all the information is being you know put into place, the way that the characters are being built, the way that the world is being built, it's all really, really, really well done. And I think it's actually better well done than 4, 5, and 6. Um, I still stand by Resident Evil 6 is all right. I, I kind of like RE6 just, you know, it's an action game, but that's to me, that's what Resident Evil's always kind of been. Not really a horror game. Not It's a puzzle action game. That's what Resident Evil really has been to me. It's, I've never gotten scared by Resident Evil <laughs> other than like VR. Resident Evil 7 VR, that was pretty scary because you are inside the game. But for the most part, I just find it to be an action uh, an action puzzle game like a shooter action puzzle game, survival-ish type of puzzle game, whatever you want to call it. Um, Anyway, so then uh, at the end of Zoe, we see that um, Joe eventually washes up on the Baker's mansion. He goes, he he uncovers Umbrella Power Gauntlet, enters a mansion where he successfully kills Jack, ministers a cure to Zoe, and, um, and then Umbrella reinforcements, including Chris, assures Joe and Zoe that they they are there to help and then she receives a phone call from Ethan and thanks him for keeping his promise to save uh to send help f- for her now if Ethan is is like a part of umbrella now the blue umbrella uh initiative or whatever they want to call it and he sends help for Zoe and Jack and everything so Zoe and Jack I think they're going to be kind of become side characters um, or, or uh, Joe and Zoe, excuse me. Joe and Zoe are going to become side characters. They're going to be like the ones that they call up when they're in a pinch. And, and that's maybe Zoe, although Zoe is like cured, maybe she gets brought in, you know, using her like weird powers that she has or whatever. Um, this is starting to, I mean, this is sound like the X-Men at this point, but I don't know. Either that or Zoe is totally cured. Joe and Zoe just go off and they, you know, they're, they're just kind of side characters at that point. Um, which Zoe was really, I mean, she helps you out in RE7, but she is technically still a side character because Mia is the main focus of the game. Um, so then I would say after that, if, if Ethan is working with Chris and they are all part of Blue Umbrella, then that would just even more go to to the point of that Jill and Claire and Leon, maybe even Ada, um, they all become part of the Blue and Umbrella Initiative. They all go underneath that. And then Wesker takes the President's Dar, like I said, and just to reimagine Resident Evil 4, because there's a lot of people who are like, maybe we need Resident Evil 4 up next to be, to be remade. I don't think Resident Evil 4 is getting remade. I really don't see that happening. Um, I think the game is is a little too new on on like the remasters to warrant, and it looks good. It plays good too, um, but I think they're getting kind of rived the whole storyline of RE four, five, and six. Um, like I said, I think that's just kind of getting just pushed off to the side, and then we're going to see like the giant plot holes be filled up and fixed up um, going into Resident Evil eight. Resident Evil 8 being, as I said, like re, uh, Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6, I guess. All three all three of those games mashed together, reimagined like the best parts of the storylines, mashed together, and then they all come together to, to fight Wesker, which in my book, I would think Wesker would be the top bad guy of Resident Evil 8, and if he did do something on the level to bring them all together to where they have to go and rescue, say the President's Star or something, 
um, and go on that Resident Evil 4 type of adventure. Or maybe he's, you know, going across the world trying to get different um, leaders of the world to get behind his plan or something like, you know, because he's Wesker's about world domination. So if you bring all the leaders of the world together and everybody starts buying into the T-Virus, then Wesker becomes like the ultimate power holder of all of them. Um, you know, world domination at his fingertips. It's like that really makes sense to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm totally off and and it's just, this is all wrong. But it is fun. This is just a fun little thing to to think about. So, um, yeah, I think that's my my prediction for Resident Evil Eight is it's going to be a reimagining, even more so of every of you know using the Resident Evil engine. Um, it could be kind of crazy to think what they could do with the Resident Evil engine if they did like fighting moves. So, say, um, Wesker jumps around like kind of like Dante or something, and I don't know, Ethan, maybe he evolves into something like a Nero Dante mix or something. And you have like these really crazy combos that you could do with it or, or something on that line. So it's not all just gunplay. You get maybe some martial arts in there or something. I don't know. It, it could be fun just to play around with different ideas. Uh, maybe it's not Ethan. Maybe it's somebody totally new and, and you know brand new for Resident Evil 8. Maybe that's the character that they introduce in Resident Evil 8 is somebody that could... Alice from the Resident Evil movies. I know there's a lot of people that don't like Alice, but possibly they can make her cool in the games instead of, you know, just what she turned out to be in the movies, which was just like a a test project. Maybe she's a full-fledged character and they actually make her pretty cool. Um, don't hate the character just because, you know? It's like they could reimagine Alice and make her some something badass in the games. Who knows? Um, so anyways... Yeah, that's where I'm. That's where I'm at with Resident Evil A. I can't wait to see what. I mean, Resident Evil Three isn't even out yet, and I can't wait to see uh, how that goes. I'm pretty sure it's going to be like 10 out of 10, really awesome, just like Resident Evil Two was. Um, Resident Evil Eight. I mean, I'd love to see another Resident Evil VR experience. Also, uh, Resident Evil Seven VR was was awesome. I still need to play through the second half of it, uh, but. Wow, uh, RE8 is is shaping up to where it, there could be some very very awesome stuff that they do with it. And if you look at their track record right now with with the um, the stuff that they're doing with Resident Evil um, as all as a whole right now, yeah, they have a good track record going right now at the moment. So uh, yeah, um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, if you want to check out any live streams of me playing through Resident Evil 3, uh, that will be on Twitch TV backslash Warwolf. Uh, the social media is, is of course, uh, Twitter and Instagram at Warwolf also. So, uh, yeah, that's all, that's all I got for this video. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for stopping by, and I will see you next time.